many liquids are essential in our daily life. They may include water, beverages, dairy products, chemicals, acids and bases, or pharmaceutical products. The quality of these liquids is determined by their chemical and physical properties. To assess these properties, various principles of measurement are used. One of these principles is the measurement of turbidity in liquids. Turbidity is the cloudiness of a liquid caused by suspended particles. These particles scatter the incident light and the liquid loses its transparency. Filtered apple juice, for example, is transparent, while unfiltered apple juice that still contains fruit pulp appears turbid. Let's take a look at how the turbidity measurement works. In 1864, Angelo Secchi, an Italian astronomer, invented the first reference for turbidity measurement a disk that is used to measure the water transparency in bodies of water. The disk is lowered into the water in a horizontal position until it is no longer visible. The visibility depth is then determined by the rope scale. The second turbidity reference was the so-called Jackson Candle Turbidimeter. It is comprised of a special candle and a glass vessel. A sample is slowly poured into the vessel until the candle flame is completely obscured and changes into an even shine. The sample depth is then related to the silica scale and the turbidity is measured in Jackson turbidity units. These methods are, however, not precise and depend on the subjective impression of the testing person. The first standard that enabled comparable measurements of turbidity was formazine, developed in 1926. Formazine is still accepted today across the water and process industries as the leading standard, as it is the only standard that can be produced with a high reproducibility under ideal conditions. Formazine forms many different particle shapes and sizes. All current turbidity units refer to this standard. Turbidity measurement not only depends on the turbidity standard but also on the light source. ISO 7027 stipulates an infrared source, which lies in the non-visible wavelength range. Since colors only occur in the visible range, the infrared measurement is not influenced by the medium's color. Turbidity measurement according to US EPA 180.1 uses white light in the visible range. The turbidity units differ depending on the selected method. For a measurement according to ISO, the defined units are formazine nephilometric unit or formazine attenuation unit. For a measurement according to EPA, the unit is nephilometric turbidity. The most widely used measurement methods for turbidity are scattered light measurement and attenuation measurement. First, let's take a closer look at scattered light measurement. Using this method, either the forward scattering backward scattering, or the 90-degree scattering is measured. The standard method according to ISO 7027 and EPA 180.1 is the 90-degree measurement. Here the detector is positioned at a right angle from the light source to measure the light scattered to 90 degrees from the incident light. This method is suitable for low turbidity values. In applications with higher turbidity values, sensors are used that measure backscattering at 135 degrees, for example. Very turbid media contain so many particles that the main part of the light beam is backscattered. This means differences in turbidity can be detected much better in the backscattered light. Sensors that are equipped with four detectors measuring at 90 degrees and 135 degrees are able to cover a wide measuring range. Now let's take a look at the attenuation measurement, also described in ISO 7027. Here again, a light beam is radiated through the medium. However, in contrast to the scattered light methods, the transmitted light is measured because the detector is positioned in one line with the light source. This method is suitable for average to high turbidity values because it delivers definite results and offers high reproducibility. The signal curve of turbidity sensors depends on the method used. When using scattered light measurement, the signal curve rises up to a certain particle density because the light is scattered towards the detector. When the particle density increases further, the measuring signal weakens again because the light is scattered so strongly that the radiation no longer reaches the detector. That's why scattered light measurement does not always deliver clear results. This phenomenon 
does not occur with attenuation measurement. Here, the signal consistently weakens with increasing turbidity. Turbidity measurement is essential for quality assurance and process control in many applications, such as drinking water production, monitoring of seawater inlets in desalination plants, outlet monitoring and sludge measurement in wastewater treatment plants, or product loss detection in dairies. We offer the right sensor for each application. For further information on liquid analysis and turbidity sensors featuring MemoSense technology, visit the Andrus Hauser YouTube channel or andrus.com.